Without any coding or plugins, you can achieve seamless loading using the default Unreal Engine. Hello, I'm Six Sevenths, a solo game developer. In this video, I'll show you how I implemented a seamless loading system entirely with blueprints. Before we begin, if you'd like to know more about my game, you can find details in the linked video and the description below. If there were no loading screens at all, what would our games actually feel like? Every time we move to a new stage, the engine has to load new assets into memory. During that process, the CPU gets busy, frames drop, objects suddenly pop into view. When that happens, immersion breaks. That's why we use loading screens. They hide the transition and ask the player to wait in stillness, like an intermission between acts. Some developers didn't want that pause. They knew that when the game continues without interruption, immersion grows stronger. So they created what we now call seamless loading or seamless level transition. A famous example is God of War 4. Throughout the entire journey, across two completely different worlds, you never see a single loading screen. It sounds extremely difficult to achieve, but I wanted to try to recreate that same feeling in my own game. To make it happen, I set three simple principles. First, maintain control continuity. The player must keep moving the character. Even if control is limited, it should last only for a brief, natural moment. Second, minimize frame drops. Loading or unloading too many actors at once causes sudden frame loss. The key is to distribute CPU load evenly. Third, maintain visual continuity. During transition, the environment may change, but what appears on screen must stay connected. To the player, it should feel like the world changes naturally inside one continuous scene. And surprisingly, with just two built-in Unreal Engine systems, data layer and world partition, I was able to achieve all three. Let's start with data layer. This system lets the developer manually control loading and unloading through triggers or events. There are three states in a data layer, unloaded, loaded, and activated. Unloaded means not in memory. Loaded means it exists in memory, but is not visible. Activated means it's visible and active in the world. The key lies in the loaded state. That's where background loading happens. This way, CPU load never spikes all at once. Loading flows smoothly, without frame drops. In the traditional level instancing approach, loading and activation happen together, which pushes the CPU all at once. But data layer separates these stages. That separation forms the first principle of load distribution. When a level changes from unloaded to loaded, that's the first wave of load. After a short delay, it transitions from loaded to activated, the second wave. Once those two are complete, the third wave comes from world partition. World partition works differently. It doesn't load distant objects. It streams them in automatically, only when the player gets close. Essentially, it divides the world into cells and streams them based on proximity. Although it's often used for open world games, I applied it to a stage-based structure for transitions between completely separate areas. Here's the key. If you rely only on data layer, too many active actors can still cause frame drops. So I placed background objects and foliage inside World Partition's spatially loaded regions. This way, both systems work together. They split the workload, balancing CPU usage. To summarize, when the player is far from the next stage, the first load happens through data layer. As the player approaches, it activates, causing the second load. After entering the new area, World Partition handles the third load with its spatial streaming. Site blocking method. This is the most common and classic approach. I created two identical alleys. When the player walks into one, their control stays active, while a background trigger quietly starts working. Inside that alley, the new level's data layer becomes loaded. Then the player is smoothly repositioned into the next area, where the data layer switches to activated. The previous level unloads, and the world partition begins streaming. To the player, it doesn't feel like they moved. It feels like the world itself has changed because they kept control and what they saw stayed continuous. This method requires an obstruction 
a door, a corridor, or a narrow cave to hide the moment of transition. During that short concealment, the next world loads behind the scenes. It's the most traditional, yet still one of the most effective, forms of seamless loading. Open view transition. Next, let's look at transitions in wide open areas. The idea is simple. Make sure the player never looks at objects that disappear or appear. At the end of a level, the system briefly controls the camera, guiding the player's view outward. Disappearing actors are placed behind the camera, hidden from sight. New actors spawn behind large structures. Everything that vanishes or appears must stay outside the player's view. During this transition, the player can't control the character. So technically, it breaks the maintain control rule. That's why I use this only during very short, high-speed movement. The speed and motion replace the feeling of control loss, keeping the player immersed. Special Material Method The third method uses a special material that isn't affected by the camera's world position. Even if the camera or character moves between levels, the background doesn't actually change. It only responds to the viewing angle. As long as the angle stays the same, the scene looks identical. So before and after teleporting, the world appears continuous. I built a material shell around the player, moved them quietly to the new location, then increased a dissolve parameter to slowly reveal the new world. The effect feels almost magical. This transition is triggered by a hold interaction. The player keeps holding a button, so even though the character can't move and the camera is locked, it still feels like they're controlling the moment. That's what keeps immersion unbroken. I hope this video helps you and inspires your own project. Thank you.